My brother, my sister, you know, most excellent, most excellent, skillful special force in the army. They can have all the training, know how to do everything, everything, everything in an excellent way. But there's one thing, if they don't know that, they're going to mess up, it will be a shame, it will just be one big mess. And that's what? To be obedient, obedient to authority. Obedient to authority. We're talking today, operate through obedience. You know, people could say, hey, that man, he can operate. That lady, yo, she can operate. Now, if there's operation, and I'm not talking about medically, I'm talking about this operation in a certain country and the army is involved and whatever is happening there, my brother, my sister, the biggest form of destruction at the end of the day, even for the most, most skillful professional group of people, in the army the best way to mess up is not to obey the command not to submit to the command not understanding how to submit to authority obedience is not just a choice obedience is part of a lifestyle it's part of a lifestyle it's part of how you operate so in this army, it's not a thing of when the, when the corporal says, ah, we need to go to the left. There's no time for discussion. There's no time for, let me evaluate. There's no time. It's to the left and that's it. So somewhere these guys in the army, when they are trained, especially in this special force, it's guys that have such, they have such an orientation, they have such a mindset that in their mind, in their heart, they just know there's nothing to argue about. When it, the command comes through, it happens immediately. Let's call it like guys, you, you know about Trump that was shot, uh, but only through the ear. I don't know, that's the one major, major miracle. I mean, what's the, what's the odds? But immediately, within a second, the security guys was just there and over him. Boom! What type of an alertness is in you to be so sensitive that when God speaks, you just know it and you obey. You just know it and you obey. So how will we get into that place? Okay, we've spoken about a lot of principles, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, blah, 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 up to O. Please go on our Father's Home channel and get all the other teachings and make it part of your life. Please, in Jesus' name I pray. But if we understand obedience, it's not just, it's not just going to come. It's going to be part of a lifestyle in a context of a relationship. Because Satan and all the demons understand obedience because they understand authority. Obedience and authority is going together. So that when, when it is said, you spirit of lust, go in Jesus' name, that demon must flee. Boom, it's, 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 it's finished. So demons understand obedience because they understand authority. But me and you understand obedience in the context of love, relationship. That's something totally, totally different. But obedience gives you an ingredient in love where the love is not cheap. I mean, come on, man. How many movies you've seen? When I love you and, and this love and that love and somebody told you he loves you or said so that lady says she, she loves you and this one says that and that one says that. But, and as far as hell can make the word love cheap, then hell can win whatever he needs to win in your life. But if you understand how to make the word love something that has depth, something that is not cheap rubbish, Something that's not a cheap word in your life. That when you say, I love you, Lord, that there's something in it. And one of the major ingredients in the word love is obedience. Obedience. We're going to the last scripture at the end, but it says, if you love me, then you will obey me. 
if you love me, then you will obey me. And it doesn't mean, you know, telling your wife in the morning, if you love me, you'll bring me breakfast in bed. That's rubbish. That's manipulation. <laughs> when God says, if you love me, you'll obey me. He says, if you don't have a cheap love, if it's not something superficial, some, just some things that you say, if it's genuine love, obedience will be in it. God is just defining the word love. What according to him love means. What is, what, what is it all about? Obedience in your life will be part of it when you say you love him. I obey him because I love him. I love him and it's shown through my obedience. My response to God. So you can sit here right now. And you can be busy. You can be here for the Marcieta program, for the Creari, because you're a member of the church, or you're just checking us out, see what we do. But right now, you are teaching yourself how to take something and respond in obedience, or you're sitting here and you're teaching yourself how to wara, wara, wara when you hear the word, but you don't know how obedience will work and except if somebody forced you to say if you don't do this this is going to happen that's the way demons obey you can learn how to obey like a demon <laughs> if somebody forced you if you don't go and do this then this is going to happen are you with me but there's supposed to be a next level of re of a lifestyle <laughs> That you don't have to live like a demon that will just obey because otherwise I'm in trouble. You obey because you love him. Because he loved you so much, he gave his life. And so with that same love, you love him so much that you will obey whatever he asks of you. So Jesus came and he obeyed the will of the Father. But let's go, let's go. Please go with me. First verse. First uh, passage I want to give to you. Know you not that to whom you yield yourselves. Oh, that's, new, that's King James, eh? To whom you yield yourselves servants to obey. His servants you are to whom you obey. You present yourself... And to whom you present yourself to obey that one, you present yourself as a servant. A servant you will be, bottom line, you will be a servant. You yield yourself as a servant to obey your flesh, to obey your opinion, to obey your hurt, to obey your success, to obey your strategy, to obey whatever your circumstances throw at you, whatever that person in your marriage will throw at you you will obey by responding to it and you're a servant to your circumstance servant to your flesh a servant to whatever you feel like doing or you choose to yield yourself a servant i'm here as a servant to the word of god to obey god and his word that's it if you don't yield into that automatically you yield to other rubbish it's not like i choose to yield myself to obey my flesh oh come on man what guy will do that but by not choosing to obey the word you're sitting here and decide i will choose to obey the rubbish in my life to obey my lust to obey rejection to obey that inferiority because I'm a nothing you believe you're a nothing okay you can be deceived you can believe that lie look at the cross and you will see you're not nothing he didn't die for nothing he died for you you better understand your value in Christ hello are you still here next one you have given me capacity to hear and obey everybody say capacity to hear and obey. I delight to do your will, O oh my Lord. I delight to do your will. 
there's, there's something in me that says it's beautiful to obey God. Devils, it's a shame that we cannot do whatever we want to. I must just, I must just the, more, the beautiful word of shut up and submit and flee. And so is with your flesh. But so is with your flesh. Okay, I, I'm in trouble or I'm out of trouble. And that's how demons will see this whole thing of obedience. But in your obedience, you delight in it. Obedience must become beautiful to you. It's like somebody that is in love and he says, how can I express my love towards that person? How can I express my love for that lady or for that, for that guy, for my children, for my parents? How can I show my appreciation and love to my parents? And if you find an excellent, beautiful way to do it, you, you delight in it. It's, it's, it's like a privilege. It's like you find satisfaction. You find fulfillment in it. When you have this desire to express your love and appreciation and suddenly you just get this, these ideas. There's a thousand ideas. Sorry. A million ideas from God. How to express your love towards Him. You have the capacity to show that love practically and that is to hear and obey. To do His will. As an expression here on earth of your love for him and you every day you grow deeper in your love for him every day there's more meaning in your love or you sit here and you hear the word and you let it go past you and more and more you become cheap 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 because it means nothing to you and you make that choice not to respond to his love not to respond to who he is not to respond to the word of God you will not walk out here the same better or bitter you'll walk out here with more arrogance focus with more arrogance hello of with more with with more humility with more awesomeness about God but wow about God or just yeah I have it this before I've heard this before. May God help us when God challenges us through his word. Amen. Are you here? Next one. My food, said Jesus, is to do the will of, the, of him who sent me and to finish his work. To finish his work. Let's say, I must finish the work of my father through Jesus Christ. You're not busy with the work of your father, God. Unless you are in Christ, with Christ, Christ in you, and you work for Christ and with Christ. But when you work for Christ and for Christ and with Christ and in Christ and Christ in you, all of that, when you do that, you're working for the Father and you do the work of the Father. Are you with me? Good evening. Are you still here? My food is to do the will of him. Called me now, my brother, my sister, if you say that's my food, uh, just take somebody and he's going on a summer hunger strike. Let's see how he will look after two months. He's gone. After 40 days, basically, yeah, they say. But let's look at two months without food. The only thing you need to do is stop eating. And two, three months, you're gone. Heaven or hell, one of the two. Two to three months, that's all you have to do. Just stop eating. Now, how can it work like in our spiritual lives? If you're not busy with the word, if you never eat the word, I'm not talking about reading the word, eat the word. Eat the word is making it part of your life. You, you, you read it, you make it, you start to memorize it, you, start, you try it out with your lifestyle. You think about it, you ask Holy Spirit to open it up for you, and you are interacting with the word you have a relationship with the word so that the word can become alive in you and dwell richly in you the word says that's what's supposed to happen if you don't do that what are you doing you're going to die spiritually and you say oh it's, it's so rough and i'm tired 
You know, many times we are tired because we are too lazy to get to God and to get to the Word. No condemnation, uh, but let's call it repentance. Those who wait on the Lord will renew their strength. They will renew their strength. So in that context, many times we could be tired and we say, by fact, yes, I'm very busy. By fact, I have such a lot of things happening. But actually, it's, I never go and sit with God so that the voice of truth will set me free. So that God will s strengthen me. Because everything will be shaken, but only what will stand, the word of God. Are you still here? So you choose, if Jesus said, my food is to do the will of my Father. Jesus says, I cannot live without doing the will of my Father. So it's not like, I cannot live without the Word. I cannot live without doing the Word. I cannot live without it. I'm going to spiritually die. I will become not just discouraged. I will become I have, will have this emptiness. I will just be drained in myself here on the inside, inside, inside. But from here, it will start to flow. There will be this power. I will grow from glory to glory, strength to strength. If I interact with the word and I respond to the word in obedience. Obedience. Because I believe this is not cheap. This is true. This is not cheap. came from the mouth of God. And this in the flesh is called Jesus Christ. It's not cheap. Are you with me? He will do his will. Everybody say, do his will. Next one. So everyone who hears these words of mine and acts upon them, obeying them. Everybody say, obeying them. Will be like a sensible, prudent, practical, wise at least you are sensible. At least you are sensible. At least you are not a fool. You're a wise man who built his house upon the rock. So if you, if you are clever, in one or other words, if you are smart and you are clever, it's not because you know a lot of stuff. It's because you do what you know. Everybody say, do what you know. Everybody say, stupid. That's what you, when you look in the mirror, you can tell yourself, stupid, you know. If you say, I, I hear the word, but I'm, it's not like I'm going to do it. So, a wise man, an intelligent man, a man that can use his brain, use what he has up here. He's not the guy that knows a lot, it's the guy that do what he knows. The one who reacts. He's like a sensible man, prudent, practical, wise man who built his house upon the rock. Let's go further. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it is not... A forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This one will be blessed, blessed in what he does. Oh, God, I, I need your blessing. Please come and bless me in this. Please come and bless me in that. You, uh, you can pray that, but that's not the prayer you're supposed to pray. God, help me to do your word, and then the promise will become a reality. God, I want the blessing, but you don't want to do, you don't want to go. You don't want to get there to receive the blessing. And you're not obeying so that you will be blessed. God is just saying the blessing will follow you. Goodness and mercy will follow you as you follow the shepherd. Don't look for the goodness and mercy and ask the shepherd to come so that, to bless you with the goodness and mercy. You follow the shepherd. The goodness and mercy will look for you. Are you here? Please, man. So what are we saying? You can look into the mirror, some see a horror movie day. You can look into the mirror and forget. Somebody's going to show you a mirror. 
hell will show you a mirror and he will tell that through that mirror there will be a voice there will be a voice there will be a voice and he will tell you a lot of rubbish that you are wasted you're nothing you're not going to make it he will remind you the mirror of what you remember what you maybe your dad said or your mum, or in, in a moment of weakness or the teacher or yourself or your mistakes or the things that you feel ashamed of those things you can give all of them a voice and through a mirror it will speak to you and tell you who you are except if you choose a certain mirror but in with this mirror you must look into everybody say into but he who looks into the perfect law of liberty you need to look into the mirror because the mirror is going to speak when you look at the word that's one thing when you look into the word there's going to be a voice there's going to be a voice you need to operate through obedience you cannot obey if there's not a voice speaking to you but when you look into the word of god my brother my sister it will become a voice but you will have a lot of noise in your head a lot of noise in your heart a lot of noise that the enemy can organize for you and the only way to get the noise out is to allow the voice in hello if you allow the voice then the noise will go because this will be the final say because you choose to respect the voice and then you operate in obedience as you respect authority and you make this the final authority not your opinion the final authority you can you sit here and you have a thousand opinions but you can choose that your opinion will not have a voice you can sit here and you can have a thousand opinions but you can choose that your opinion will not have a voice as you sit here your disappointment will not have a voice your your hurt your offense will not have a voice you choose that the word of god will have a voice and that's it are you still here please man let's become wise let's become wise so that we understand who's the one that sent you in what authority do you come here in what authority do you come here to do this to do that to that you come in the name of the lord you are sent by heaven as an ambassador of Christ and you come in the name of the Lord. But does it mean anything? It, does, it mean, doesn't mean anything. If you sit in that place and you represent Italy and you speak a lot of rubbish and, and you don't know what is the policies from, from Italy. You don't know what they stand for. You don't know what they believe. You speak a lot of rubbish and you look like a fool, man. They just chase you out of that place where all the ambassadors are coming together of all the nations you only come with authority if you know what he is saying because you are from not from here you're from a different kingdom but you are in this world but not from this world jesus said john 17 when he talked about how you are sent by him as the father has sent me so i sent you so if i send you you better do what i tell you if you are sent you are sent with nothing if you don't know the message but tomorrow you are sent by the fact of the authority in my life is i need food at the end of the month so i just have need to have a job and therefore i'm doing this job you are sent by the crisis by crisis management you are sent by what or by who make sure you are sent by god into that situation so that when you are there you what you do you do as if unto the lord because you obey him you operate through obedience unto the final authority and you decide it's jesus christ as every man every woman tomorrow will operate through obedience to some or other final authority make sure you understand the voice of the final authority in your life amen you're still here you need to learn how he, the way that he thinks the way that he operates where obedience is not just 
obeying a command responding to a command obedience is you you learn how how he thinks you start to understand his heart what he would say what is his perspective about certain things now we are talking about you know people you are there at the job you'll obey you'll do everything 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 but you don't know the heart of that man you don't know the heart of that man you'll obey your wife or you'll obey your husband but you don't know their heart it's, it's, it's a struggle then man you're in the ministry and you don't understand the heart of that pastor you never come to know that oh it will be a struggle you will just in performance you know, the whole time you will need to do that but somewhere with God he wants us to know his heart we must submit as servants as servants and I tell my flesh you will serve you will serve you will serve but later when the disciples understood the heart of Jesus he said I don't call you just my servants I call you my friends I know there's a lot of songs and things that we say I'm I'm a friend of God and Jesus Christ is my friend um, go and look at the word again it's not necessarily like that it doesn't mean he's not a friend he he died for you he loves you but friendship with Christ is not cheap he said you took my words you obey my words and now you not performed enough to be my friend no through the obedience you come to know the way that I operate you come to know the way that I think you know come to know the way that I act and the, the way my heart is and because you have my heart I have your heart we start to think the same that is called friends you know that old woman and auntie sitting there on the stoop what's a stoop in English veranda that's not the name of a woman veranda place where you sit sitting on the veranda okay and they look at one another they drink their coffee look one another in the eye and they just know what the other one is saying that's beautiful ah man that's a beautiful picture of two people loving one another so it's supposed to be more and more and more my brother my sister in your life in my life that we worship when we look at God and you just sense who he is where he is hello and he looking at you and you know in his eyes you see you see where he is with you may, may that be so may that be so in our lives amen open the eyes of my heart Lord that I may see you like Habakkuk said I'm standing on my watchtower to see what he is saying not to hear what he's saying to see what he's saying that's where friendship come in okay next one anyone who loves me will obey my teaching my father will love them and we will come to them and make our home with him that is that is the name of the church our father's home when I we planted the church I said God the name of the church what is your agenda with the church what is your agenda with the church and God said to me I'm making a home for myself in the nations and the church is the vehicle for a purpose to make a home the church is not the end product the word church ecclesia the Greek word means called out called out of darkness called out of the rubbish called out of the sin called out of the authority of hell and demons and flesh and all that hamors so church means called out so just to be called out means church means you're standing on the tension you're not anymore in the hamors you're in a different place but what does that mean so the word church means just I'm here on attention I'm here giving attention to why am I here now and not in the Hamors anymore why am I not in the darkness anymore called out of darkness into his marvelous light to do to do to do good works God has prepared for me to do what he has prepared for me 
so that I will declare and brag about his marvelous works. Brag about who he is. So church is just the vehicle for a purpose. If you say I'm part of the church on earth, you say I'm part of a group of people that are called out of the rubbish. Not a product of circumstance, not a product of the past, a product of the heart of the Father with a purpose here on earth. And in that purpose, you are one with your Father, you are one with the Master. And the Master says, I am building my church. The question is, will you build with him? If he is the final authority, and you operate through obedience to the final authority, you will build with Jesus Christ his church that he will present as a home for his father and you with jesus christ to present the church as a home for your father oh what a privilege what an awesome privilege are you with me are you with me and father will work in you father will work in you if you understand the revelation from the father if you obey obey operate through obedience to your dad to your father then what will the Father do with you? Present you to Jesus as the bride. The Father coming in with the bride. The marriage of the Lamb. Hey, the marriage of the Lamb. To present us as the bride to his son. What a, what a wedding that's going to be. Revelation, Revelation 19. But in all of this, men. Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. Like I said in the beginning, if you love me, it will not be cheap. Because if you love me, it will not be cheap. You will obey my teaching. But the more you sit in church, the more you hear the word, hello, the more you can hear the word or pray or think about God and you don't get involved, the more shallow, the more fake Love will be in your life. You will not understand what love is. Love and fake will be connected more and more and more and more. How? By me sitting, hearing the word, by me reading the word, by me thinking about God, by me praying. And it's all about me and my situation. And yeah. You either will become more real. There will be more and more depth in your love for God or it will become more fake it will not be stagnant fake and love tomorrow will be more connected after the service will be more connected to you or love and depth love and riches love and and meaningfulness if you have such a word in the word love but if you have if there's meaning if there's depth in if love is not cheap in you, you will obey, and then my Father will love you. Oh, I thought the Father loves the world, loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten Son. Yes, but when you want to walk in that love, when you want to touch that love, and give that same love that you touch back to God, that you love him with the love that he gave you, when love must be alive in you, and you experience how the Father loves you as a, such a reality, not just by faith, but it's a reality in your lifestyle. With a love that compels you, that drives you in what you do. For that, you must come into a place where your love for God is not cheap. And that is love and obedience, two sides of one coin. Because that is not cheap, according to God. His definition of love is not cheap. operate through obedience and then he will come and make they will come and make their home with you how will they make their home with you it's not just God coming and you love him you obey his teaching and he comes and now he's at home with you and you have hope. he's going to make a home how is he going to do that he's going to use people he's going to use circumstances he wants you to to change at his feet, sitting at his feet and change, but now if he wants to make his home with you, in his home, love is patient, love is kind, love is tender, all of that. So he's going to bring that into your life 
where you understand forgiveness, where you understand respect, where you understand how what his blood has done for you. But for that, he's going to organize people that you need to forgive. <laughs> how you organize people that you need to forgive? You don't need to forgive people that is just so wonderful to you, your best friends, you know? But the guys that you thought they were your best friends or the guys that now irritate you or this or that or that or they hurt you. Oh, the devil sent these guys on my, you know, and just distracting me from, yeah, my peace is gone. Okay, your peace can go if that is your type of peace. But what about the peace of God that is in you? Uh, go rather with the peace of God, not your peace. My joy is gone because that guy, I just want to kill him. He's irritating me. He's just frustrating me, you know? Oh, there's God waiting for you to set aside your emotional joy so that the joy of the Lord can be your strength and not your up and down, left and right emotional joy. <sighs> Amen. That is God in that way. He's making, he's making, he's making his home with you. He's setting things in order between us. He's setting things in order in the nations. He's preparing his home. Amen. Oh, You're still here. Right. Matthew 28. I know you're all writing down. Oh, I walk by faith. Not by sight. Okay. Matthew 28. Jesus said, All authority. Everybody say all. All authority was given to me in heaven and on earth. In heaven and on earth. Therefore, 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 go into the nations. Make disciples of the nations. Now, the therefore means you need to see all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. But you can create your own heaven. You can create your own earth. And over you, you know this guy that is miserable and that negativity over is like hanging like this muffness this uh, cloud of negativity or this cloud of of issues is hanging over him you can see it in his face you can see in, you see it when he comes into that place just as issues are coming in this place all authority of issues is given by you to all the issues that can hang over you, the, all the issues uh, uh, in the world that you've created on this earth for yourself. God said you need to hate that world. You need to flee from that world and run into the world that God says, I so loved that world that I gave my only son so that that world be can become a reality in your life. Only through obedience. That running to that world is obedience, obedience. If you want to run like this tomorrow, obedience, obedience, obedience. That's the running to God. Okay? Yeah, you, you are still here? What are we saying? All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore make disciples. And everything is shaken. You look at the nations, you look at situations, everything is shaken. So the devil is shaking everything. No, the devil is not shaking everything. God is shaking everything. Now you pray against God. Don't pray against God. He sent the storm. But you are protected if what? If what? If you built your house on the rock. What is the rock? The word is the rock. Uh-uh. The word is not the rock. The one who do the word. The one who obey the word. That is the foundation. That is the rock. The rock is the obedience to the word of Christ. The one that obeys the word. I compare that with a wise man who built his house on the rock. Are you with me? You can say, yes, the rock is Jesus Christ. But if that Jesus Christ is the rock even though millions are going to hell. But the one who used the rock as the foundation, and that using the rock as the foundation for your house, is locked up in obedience. 
But you're not building a foundation on the rock. You're not building on the word. You're not building a foundation in your life if there's nothing of obedience, if there's not a doing of the word. But when you do the word, you are safe, 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 safe. And your house will stand and God wants to brag about you when he shakes heaven and earth. He wants to brag about his church in the nations. And then the nations will see the only houses that are standing is the, the church and that church and that church. The, they still stand. They still stand. And the nations will know where to run to. Praise God for his mercy over your life then. That you were not selfish, but you built through obedience to the word of God. You built a house that was... Standing in the storm, so that through the storm, God will have a testimony. Through the storm, God will have a testimony. God will not, you can pray that storm away. It will not go away. God sent the storm so that it will be seen that he is the foundation of your house. So that what? So that others can come and run into your house and be safe. No, oh, they, they, don't, they, they don't deserve that. You also don't, you don't deserve anything. It's only through the blood of Christ. But where's the houses in the nations? Where's the houses in Bluefontein? Where's the houses in education and, and, and the business? Where's the houses that stand? Doesn't matter what comes against them. They stand. Where's that? Where's those guys with those testimonies? It's a, it's a children of God that has a lifestyle of obeying God. A lifestyle of obeying God. Keep his command. Be careful. Joshua 1, you can write that also. Be careful to observe everything that I've commanded you. Be careful to observe. Be careful to observe. It's not easy to obey God. I'm very sorry. It's not easy. Many times it's not easy to obey God. But when you want to obey, be careful to observe. It's, it's much more than just Submitting to a command. It's much more, much more, much more. Operate through obedience. That word obedience. Obedience is beauty in obedience. There's not beauty in the obedience when devils submit and you know, must be chased out in the name of Jesus. Yes, it's amazement at God's authority. But the beauty of obedience is in relationship. The beauty of obedience is in heart to heart connection. As an expression of love. An expression of love. So as you go from this place, say, God, open it up for me. The beauty of obedience. The beauty of obedience. The depth of obedience. The meaning of obedience. I don't want to obey like a demon obey. Because the demon don't even argue. We sometimes argue. Demons don't even argue. So are we then worse than demons? Because the demon just, we shut up, submit, and there he goes. Whatever Jesus said. No. <laughs> so I will not be arrogant. But I need to learn a respect for the final authority in my life. And I choose the final authority is the word of God. Amen. That will become a voice. That will become a voice. Oh, there's a lot of teachings about the voice and the noise. There's a noise in the city. There were many times a noise when, when they brought the voice of God in that place. When people testify, missionaries, people going into villages, people going into cities, into nations. They bring the voice and the devil and hell creates a noise. So that people, so long people ne not hear the voice. So that they are confused and think they must chase out this, these guys. Because they brought a lot of noise. No, they brought the voice. But first of all, the noise must get out of your own head, out of your own life. Me and you, ah, we will still be growing into it until the day we see him face to face, eh? So we will never be perfect. But come on, guys, life could be a, maybe a little bit less complex and difficult. Or let's try to have a little less issues. Because the issue don't start with David. The issue start in yourself. You don't first have an issue with that guy. The, you have an issue with somebody because you have an issue with yourself. But if you understand who you are in Christ, if you understand the amazing, amazing, amazing love and forgiveness given to you, you'll be able to give it to others. 
Obedience brings a depth and a quality in your love, in your context of love, in your love relationship with God, a love relationship with yourself. And with that, love others in the way that you love yourself. Bring the quality between you and God. Bring the quality in you. Sort out the, the hamors inside. So that quality can flow to others. Where God says, now with the quality between me and you. Now the, with the quality that I established in you. Love your neighbor with that quality love that I've given you. That I've produced in you as the fruit of the Spirit. Amen. We can choose that. Mm, going to that scripture that's not there. Okay. All authority given to me in heaven and earth, therefore go. Go, go, go. The final authority of stress will command you and you will go in the name of stress. You will go in the name of lust. You will go in the name of, of, of rejection. Go in the name of it. But you will go. As you go from here tomorrow, you will go in the name of something. Hopefully in the name of Christ. In Jesus' name. Go there for make disciples. Make disciples. Bring them in the pattern of lifestyle that you have. Make disciples is not telling them how to live. Unfortunately, it's to make disciples is bring them into your lifestyle. Oh. Go therefore and bring people into your lifestyle because then they will be my disciples. Because Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. As the light of the world, you shine forth who's the light. And in all the rest, you know all of them. The letter of Christ, the bride of the trophy. You remember the trophy of Christ? Trophy of his victory? You don't know that one. That's another series of another we, uh, blah, blah, two months. Trophies of his victory. That's who you are. You are a trophy of his victory. Just do that. You know, a trophy has some handles. Now, now, now God take the trophy. You are not taking, he is taking there the handle and put the trophy there. So that there you stand and you brag about him. Brag about his victory. Trophy of his victory. Okay, let's try that. Trophy of his victory. <laughs> so next time that little boy wants to become angry, you know. I'm a trophy of his victory. So I will love you. I will forgive you. I will... Be patient with you. Are you here? Smack your neighbor and see if he's uh, patient with you. <laughs> no, you're too scared to do that. Okay. Go and make disciples of all the nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And then teach them to know a lot. Go therefore make disciples of all the nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. And teach them to know a lot. No, no, no. Teach them to obey. Operate through obedience. Any form of teaching in the word, any form of what I'm saying now is so that when you walk out here, you're supposed to know how to obey God more or how to obey God in a better way. How to take certain robbies out or deception or lies so that you can come into the place of obeying him more. That means putting more depth and quality in your love relationship with him. Amen. Teach them to obey. So when you hear teaching, it's not to know a lot. That's Pharisee. That think he's doing God a favor by crucifying Christ. No, it's not by knowing more. But to obeying more. Teach them to obey. And then, it says, teach them to obey and see. There's something to see. There's something to see. Teach them to obey and see I'm with you till the end of the age. That seeing is something more than just God being with you. Because God will never leave you and will never forsake you till he come again. Because he's a faithful father. His presence will be with you. But if you not just know that he's with me by faith, but you submit to him as the final authority. You go and you duplicate what he has done in your life. You duplicate into others, make disciples. Baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Let them identify with Christ. And then teach them to obey. Teach them to obey. You get into that type of life. 
God says, you will see me in a way that others don't see me. And see, I will be with you till the end of the age. It wasn't like, I'm not going to be with you. I'm going to leave you alone. And only if you make disciples, baptize them and teach them to obey, then I will be with you. That's not what he said. That's not the meaning of that. Are you here? Because he will never leave, he never forsake you. But you will see him in a way. Because through your obedience, through the way that you operate, you will see him operate and you will operate with him. You will see him, what he's doing in the nation, what he's doing in Bloemfontein. You, you know, you will not be a spectator. You will be doing it with him. You will be working with him in education. You will be working with him in the, in the ministry. You will be working with him in different businesses. You will do it with your dad. You will do it with your king and your master. You will have that awesome privilege to do it with him. But you will see it only if you take him as the final authority in heaven and earth. Respect him as that authority. And whatever he says, you put it into your life. Let him work in you so that what is in here you can duplicate in others. Make disciples. Make disciples. Bring them in the right pattern of life. And when you teach them how to obey him, teach them. Not just teaching for the sake of teaching. Teaching how to obey him. You will see God in a so much more special way. God, come and do it in our lives. Oh God, we pray that. God, we need your mercy. We need your grace to understand how, how to get into obedience, not just as a command and submitting to a command, but that we will submit to you and bring obedience as a lifestyle. Bring obedience as a facet of depth, depth, depth in love in our love relationship with you. For God, forgive us for every form of fake love, fake talking about loving you, but it was, so many times it was fake, Lord, with other people, with ourselves, with a fake love, loving ourselves with a fake love until things are not right in our lives, Lord. God, we want to run from that type of manipulative love. God, we want to repent from every form of fake, cheap love. In Jesus' name. Fake, cheap, filthy love that has to do with lust. No, God, here we are. Fill us with your awesome love. Help us to see through the cross what you've, di what you've done for us, Lord. I pray for a revelation of quality love for every man, every woman in this place. Every man, every woman in this place. To receive your awesome love through the blood of Christ, but then to love themselves with a quality love so that they can love others with that love. Thank you, Father, you can come and, that you come and you work in us. Please, Lord, come and do what you want to do. We want to operate through obedience as a privilege. Obedience, not like demons submitting, but obedience because we love you. Thank you that you make it real, that you make it a reality through your spirit. We pray that in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen.